Well, um, you know, we've always felt like running the football was vital to having a, uh, an offense uh, that's able to thrive on consistency. You know, um, we didn't end up throwing many passes. Uh, we didn't complete that many passes, you know. Um, uh, and, and so um, when those kind of games come along, uh, obviously you've got to find a way to put points on the board. And, and against a lot of teams, you want to be able to control the ball. Running the football is a, a very good way of doing that. You know, we only had 65 reps uh, in, in the game. Um, they had 90. That's a huge disparity, and especially to win by the score that we won by. But it's what you do with the, with the downs that you got is uh, what's important. And, um, you know, we averaged, I think it was eight point something uh, a play. So, uh, you know, when, when you can do that, then, then you're, you're uh, able to put yourself in position to put points uh, on the board. Not a, another vital thing is, you know, we did win the turnover battle. Uh, all those carries, we, we didn't fumble the ball. Um, and um, so that was, I think, also huge. We went into the season wanting to somewhat simplify our offense uh, and make sure that we were just getting rep after rep after rep on the plays that, uh, that we knew we needed to have to, to be a, for our basic offense. And I think we ran, I don't know how many bellies we ran. It was well over 20, uh, maybe closer to 30, um, you know. Uh, but it, it was uh, a bunch of the same play. You know, now you may make a small adjustment here or there on the play with what you do with your tight end or those kind of things, but um, um, it's basically the, the same play. And we ran out of the same formation uh, a good share of the time, two tight ends, two receivers. You know, that helped us in several ways. Um, gives you the extra interior blocker with your tight end on, on the line of scrimmage. Uh, gives you an opportunity to run option football either way, which, you know, has proven to be pretty vital for us in the last two ball games. I think we only ran ran it five times each game, but they were very productive, the, the option game. And, um, uh, and, and it's also, uh, you know, enables you to, to run your plays both ways because it's a balanced set. And, um, and, and so, you know, that was something that we used well. Um, I thought it played into where we were with injuries with our uh, receivers, banged up receivers playing in the, in the game. Um, you know, you only have two wide outs on the field at that time, along with two tight ends. So a lot of things came into play that, um, you know, made some sense to us going into this game, and it played out uh, fairly well. Um, also, yeah, just a follow-up. Um, Nathan Work, he said after the game, you know, Bowling Green didn't pay much respect to his running abilities. I guess, you know, and you mentioned that he creates another dimension for the running game. I guess, how, how do you think, I guess, teams prepare for you in terms of defending Rourke, and uh, how do you think maybe you can exploit maybe how they prepare for you? Well, th those are two questions that c can require an extensive answer, but uh, I, I really will try to condense it a little bit for, for you uh, in terms of how they prepare for, for Nathan. Um, you know, you got to be prepared to, uh, to play good pass defense as, as well as good run defense because, uh, you know, he gives you that extra running back in, in, in the backfield. You know, a lot of times you're dealing with a one-back set, but really we've got two running backs with, uh, with him there. He has ability to make a big and explosive uh, play. Really a good cutback runner. Um, you know, he makes a, a lot, he gets a lot out of cutting against the grain at times and setting blocks up and, and then has the, the speed necessary to be really effective to make the, the very long, uh, long runs. And, um, you know, in, in terms of the running game with, uh, with him, um, you know, it's, some of it is, is it's a read play. Um, you can do it off of a couple different plays, but it's a read play um, where he's reading people and if they give him the pool, he takes it, and and uh, you know it's been something that's been around for uh, quite a few years now. Uh, but you got to have the right quarterback to be able to to utilize it and ha have it be effective for you. So that part of the game has become a pretty good dimension for us. 
Uh, I know Kent State had an injury at quarterback, but they really don't put the ball in the air a lot. Uh, you know, they're almost an exclusive running team. How are you guys going to uh, schematically change for that, or are you going to? Well, um, you know, they can still they can still score through the air. You know, that's they may not throw a lot, but uh, you know, at times they they can be productive uh, with their throwing. So you got to honor the the throw. But we we'll go into this game, you know, like we do every game, and that's to really stop the run first. And um, you know that'll that'll that's going to take a lot, you know, because uh, they run the ball very very well, um, and and so. Uh, but if you let them you let them get that rolling, then obviously off of that comes the play action passes, and that and that's where you're really uh, hurt. So get get hurt. So you gotta you gotta just kind of pay attention to um, to what your responsibilities are, and um, um, make sure that you're ready to stop the run, but. Obviously, when uh, when the coverage dictates that you're in coverage, or if you're playing man to man, you know you've got to do your responsibility. So it'll it'll it's going to take a disciplined defensive uh, unit to uh, to keep it from getting yards, keep it from getting points on on the ground. And the Kent State game has always been a physical football game. So you know that's that's one thing that always seems to be the case. And um, and so anytime you play physical, you you have a shot, and that's how we feel, and I, and I believe that's how they feel. I know uh, <clears throat> Rourke has been the guy the past few weeks, but um, just because you'd been a two quarterback system to start the year, is there ever a conversation that you have with him, or Coach Albin, or Coach Isverding, or somebody else, when he starts to struggle a little bit, just to sort of keep him from looking over his shoulder? Well. Um, you know, obviously, uh, if, if if quarterback will ha have some stretches where they'll play really well, and sometimes they won't play well for a little bit. But um, you know, he's been proving that that he can work his himself out of that. And uh, even if our receivers are dropping ball, or he's not on target with his throws, or we're not getting off the line, uh, uh, you know, we're getting grabbed, or we're getting. Uh, jammed at the at the line of scrimmage and throws all the timing of the routes off and that kind of stuff and your passing game isn't uh, working very well. Um, you know he has ability to kind of take over a game with the other dimension and uh, that's a, that's running. And if we're not running the ball very well, he has the ability to to really throw. And so you don't want to be too quick to um, you know. Uh, Take your starting quarterback out. We were going with two quarterbacks there, you know, for a while. Um, he has been um, starting, and you know, has, has earned that. Um, I will say this about Quentin. You know, he's really practicing well. He's practicing hard. He's been a great team guy, and um, obviously, you, you need that to con you need that to continue because um, you just never know how things are going to work down the road, um, and and so. You got to make sure that two guys are really prepared to go, and that's what we're continuing to uh, to do. Mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, Chad Moore, I was wondering if there's an update on him, and also if if Poppy's going to be back to practicing right away, later in the week, anything like that. Poppy's uh, able to start practice today, um, and he'll be available and ready to, ready to play. Um, as far as Chad is concerned, he's he's uh, you know somewhat of a question mark. Didn't finish the game. And um, and yet, you know, he's a tough, tough guy. I've learned never to rule Chad out. Um, but you know, we'll 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 see where he's at health-wise, and and just go from there. Jason, you had a chance to look at the film, Frank. What what is it? Wide receiver health, or is there something else that is uh, kind of hampering your ability to throw the football right now? Well. Um, you know, part of it's uh, we've been facing very good defensive secondaries, and uh, we'll face another one this this week. Um, and and so you know you're just not having guys running running free. You know, you take a guy like Poppy out of it, and you know who's your leading uh, point production guy last year in terms of touchdowns. Um, that, that's a that's a, a big loss. Uh, but in saying that, you know, we went into the season knowing that that we had really good depth and good players at, at, at wide receivers. But what's happening is, you know, they're they're playing at not a hundred percent. 
And, um, you know, for instance, Coke uh, really has very, very limited practice time the last uh, uh, two weeks. And, and so it's very difficult to play at the top of your game when you're not at practice on a regular, regular basis. And we're finding that, that you know, that's hitting us um, a little bit. And some guys are, are practicing that aren't 100% and they're making it to the games not 100%. And so, you know, we're hurting a little bit there. But we're starting to uh, get, uh, get some guys a little healthier. Getting Poppy back will, will be a plus. Uh, defensively, did, does it feel like you've, you've kind of hit the high water mark in terms of injuries at the defensive end position and, and it's starting to go the other direction right now? Uh, got Will back. Uh, I mm -hmm. think you feel good about getting Kevin back this week. Is, is that the feeling up front anyway? Yeah, I, I, think, um, I think that's a good way of putting it. You know, it, it, uh, we had reached a point where we were really kind of getting to where it was uh, not a very good situation. And, um, in terms of the health of our guys. And again, you know, some of those guys were, were not able to practice uh, very much and then, but were okay to play in games. But, you know, that production then just never is quite the, quite the same if you, if you don't get good practices in. So we're starting to get some guys healthy there. And, um, you know, we'll, we'll see how that goes this week uh, in terms of how much practice time some of those guys are going to, going to be able to get, but hopefully um, they're going to be able to get enough to uh, play well and, and that we keep getting healthy at, at that position. Uh, what has a guy like Andrew Payne meant for you at the, at the tackle spot, a, a guy that maybe you didn't count on or people didn't expect to contribute the way he has yeah. uh, through the first seven games? Yeah. He's, um, he's done a great job for us, um, and he's getting more and more playing time. You know, We're able to rely on him. Uh, being a, a factor in there. Um, he's got excellent quickness, got excellent strength. Doesn't, he's not the biggest guy. Um, when, when you put him amongst 300-plus uh, pound offensive linemen, uh, but he's got excellent strength and, as I mentioned, excellent quickness. And, uh, you know, he loves the game. He plays hard uh, every, every play, and he's got a athleticism. So he's, uh, he's helping us. Um, also, just in the secondary, uh, I noticed that you were splitting reps between Jamal Hudson and like Marlon Brooks and putting them with uh, Brad Ellis or Jalen Fox. I guess was that something new that you tried at the Bowling Green game, or have you been doing that? Um, you know, uh, kind of. We started that the previous game. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they both uh, got some reps, and you know what we're finding out is, you know, it's not unusual for a team to get 90 reps, and uh, if you just your two corners are out there for uh, all those reps. Um, you know, it gets tough on them because now you're talking about, you know, a lot of teams go deep a fair amount during the game. And uh, so they're running. And um, uh, so we needed to, to make sure our two starters, uh, Brett and Jalen, are, are uh, you know, able to get breaks during the course of the game. And those two freshmen, you know, kept improving and, and um, are very athletic guys. And, and so it made sense to, uh, get them in the mix. You know, they came back in where there's, you know, still there's, you know, at least six games to play uh, when they when they came back uh, or came off their red shirt year. Um, you know, seven if you go to a MAC championship, eight if you play in a bowl game, and and so all that. I, I think when they looked at it, all that experience that they would get this year will just make them a better football player next year. And uh, and, and obviously we're we're um, getting them experience right now. Um, this is the start of the three-game home stretch for you guys. Um, how are you as a coaching staff and the players? Are you excited, or how do you feel about this home stretch upcoming? Yeah. Don't even have to play on the road till November. I uh, feel good about it. Uh, but in saying that, we've been playing good on the road. And, um, and obviously, we've got to get something started at home. And um, we, we've got to become a better home football team, more dominant. Uh, football team at the, at home, um, you know we have good crowds, um, and and so, you know it's just going to come back to us to make sure that, that we're ready to go um, and play our best football, and and we, you know with with the understanding that the home field needs to be an advantage for us, and and so that, that comes back to us just just doing better. 
but we're glad to be on a home stretch. Coach, it seemed like two straight weeks now where special teams hasn't exactly been as good as it has been in the past. CMU was the block field goal this week. A lot of penalties on special teams. Um, do you attribute that to mental mistakes or just the situations of what's going on? Three penalties on special teams this week, um, and that's you know that, that's more than you would, after, yeah, you right. Know? And you're correct on that. Um, uh, you know, not uh, that we've got aggressive guys and talented guys on those on those special teams, and. Uh, uh, I think they're playing hard, and, and sometimes, you know, playing hard can can relate to a, uh, an error here or there in in, in terms of uh, penalties. But uh, if you look at us, I think we're maybe second in the conference in penalties against us as a football team. So you know that's a great stat uh, because that's not where we always have been, <laughs> and uh, and so you know I think our guys have been showing discipline. Um, you know, the three this week on special teams is not what we're after. Certainly the targeting fouls um, are, n are not uh, what, what we're after, you know. We're not coaching any differently than, than what we've had since the targeting rule came into effect. We're using the hawk tackling um, that a lot of, a lot of teams are, are, are incorporating and practicing. Um, but, you know, we just got aggressive guys. and. Uh, um, Sometimes you get caught, I think, in the, in the targeting situation. Sometimes you just, you're coming in, you get caught, you're, it's a moving target, you know, and, and so it, it can become very, very difficult not to have the kind of contact that when they really examine it and examine it, and, you know, they, they may flag you. But saying all that, um, you know, our overall number of penalties are, are down, and, and uh, I think that's good. Just to follow up with Nathan, uh, you guys averaged 39 points. Um, which is the highest in the MAC, and then with the three touchdowns Saturday, uh, he is now the uh, best rushing quarterback statistically uh, by touchdowns you've ever had. Tyler had ten in 2011. Um, how is he able to just play so well under pressure? Maybe something you don't see in practice because obviously it's not going to be a swarm of guys chasing him. Um, but mm -hmm. how well does he adapt under pressure? And uh, just kind of talk about that. Yeah, he uh, he just has a knack, you know. Um, you know, he, he uh, is able to escape uh, from some tough situations, uh, keep the ball alive, um, sees people running downfield when he is scrambling and can dump the ball out, can throw across his body if he has to, um, but has excellent ability to make people miss. And, um, and that is huge. You know, he's, he's like a running back in, in, uh, in that manner. He, he can make the first, second guy miss and uh, he can set up blocks, and he's got enough speed to, to really be a factor in getting long runs for you. So, um, you know, it's some quarter, quarterbacks have it, some quarterbacks don't, he does. Does he remind you of Tyler at all? Um, you know, never given it a lot of thought, but, uh, but I, I think there's probably similarities in that Tyler could throw well, he could run well, you know. Um, Tyler was a smart quarterback, uh, had good leadership. I think all that uh, is true with Nathan also. How do you guys balance when you're calling plays with Nathan? The option is one of maybe his best play. How do you balance wanting to run that but also not trying to overuse it? Yeah. Um, yeah, we are selective a little bit in, in uh, when we do uh, run, run, run an option. Uh, because it's you know the down the line option is is a phase of it. The other, it's not truly an option. You don't have an option back, but he's reading uh, at the line of scrimmage just like an option quarterback does. And so you know he's either handing it or he's running, and and so he's getting plenty of opportunities that way. Um, you know we're we're not um, uh, you know he's. He, scr he scrambles some and makes plays uh, that way. So we don't want to really go about devising more and more runs uh, for him, you know. Uh, we've got good running backs. I think we've got a good offensive line. And, and so we need to make sure they get their carries. And um, they are. And so that seems to, you know, you're able to balance that out a little bit. If you don't have a good line, you don't have a good, uh, good, running backs and your quarterback has to be your main runner that's 
not a formula for that's probably going to last you through the season, you know. And so I, th I think what we're doing is probably the, the right approach in the times that um, he's got the ball in his hands when you consider all those ways he can, he can carry it. Um, looking at Kent State, what do you expect them to do to keep Nathan contained and to keep AJ contained? What do you expect them to do to keep that rushing tack? Yeah, I, uh, you know, don't know um, uh, what their thoughts are really right now. Um, I do believe that they feel like they're a talented defensive unit that they can run. And so when, when you when you got talent and you got guys that can run, you probably don't want to try to do too much different than, than what you've been uh, – what you've been doing and um, you know so I, I don't expect to see them deviate too much from uh, what they've what they've shown because what they've shown they're doing pretty well at you know and so I think they'll just you know play it uh, somewhat the way it is maybe have a surprise here or there for us but I don't expect them to have to build completely around uh, uh, our, our running game with uh, with Nathan Uh, what, what kind of benefit does your defense get uh, in getting ready for Kent State? They, you know, Kent's running, they're running some down the line option. They're running a lot of zone read, and and they're seeing that every day, every week in practice. Does that help in in the prep going up to this one? Yeah, I think it does. You know, obviously you go through spring, for the most part, running against your own stuff, and and so what uh, what we'll be doing, you know, they, they will have seen a, a lot, and um, it you know it won't be. Uh, won't be anything that that will catch them uh, on, but um, uh, so their preparation, as I mentioned, I, I think probably doesn't have to change a lot to what we're doing because we're somewhat of a run-oriented team that throws off of the run, and, and that's kind of what they are. Uh, you mentioned Brett Kittrell got some reps Saturday. Did did he get a lot of reps like you first thought? Did you ever have a sequence there where you had more than one true freshman on the field at the same time up front? Yeah, um, you know, um, he's uh, he's a guy that I showed promise right away. You know, he's one of our stronger guys in in, in, in the weight room. You know, um, you know he's going to get a, a little bit bigger, um, but he's got good size and, and great strength, and and he's got athleticism. You know, and and so it was pretty clear. To me, and, and I think Coach Johnson that he was gonna uh, get playing time this year, and and not to just you know say that hey, redshirting him is gonna be the best thing. Um, and he's getting more and more reps as the season goes on. Um, you know, I, I think he's, I think Coach and I agree he's a very good run blocker. He's learning our system. Probably got to get a little bit better on pass uh, techniques and pass protection. Type of stuff, uh, but that's coming, and I uh, expect it'll keep coming and probably start coming by leaps and bounds as he gets more uh, more playing time. Um, so, you know, uh, right now we got uh, at least four freshmen playing. I haven't stopped to to think it through. We got the two corners, um, two linemen, two offensive linemen, Julian Ross, Julian Ross. That's five. Yeah. yeah. Uh, how rare is it for you to have two first-year guys contributing on the offensive line on? One of your best running teams here. Very rare. Um, you know you, that, that doesn't. The offensive line is a, a unique position in, in terms of you gotta you gotta have ability, you gotta have size, you gotta have strength. Not everybody comes with the, the exact size that the, that they need to be at. Um, they don't come with the exact strength coming out of high school a lot of a lot of times, and so there's a lot of development that has to be made by guys in the offensive. Line. And then it's a complicated position to, to learn. It's kind of like the quarterback spot. I mean, there are so many things that it's difficult for a first-year player to, to really get it done uh, at a high level. Uh, but, but those guys have, you know, to, to their credit. They're smart, they're tough, um, they're athletic, and uh, pretty good combination. And they'll, they'll keep getting bigger and a little stronger as they, as they go through our program. 